You don't have to talk much because uh, the kind of work that I do when you go to perform and all that, when you get the mic, all you have to do is, Hey guys, what's up? And all of that, and everything goes, ah. But uh, I just thought, you know, I'll just come and talk about what I've been through my life and, you know, uh, the journey so far, I'm guessing. So, uh, basically, I am uh, a person that's out of Bangalore. Uh, my parents had there a long time back, so uh, Bangalore days hadn't uh, anything to do with them shifting to Bangalore and finding uh, uh, a career there. I think uh, this was back in the 80s or all that. So I was born in uh, I was born in Kerala. I was born uh, in a hospital called Padanganan Hospital. It wasn't very cool because uh, when you talk to a lot of friends and you ask them where they were born, they say Victoria Hospital, Saint George Hospital, and I'm from Padanganan Hospital. So that was definitely not cool. So I think after a point, uh, so we shifted there. Uh, I think in a month, I was I was uh, in Bangalore and uh, happened to be there. So uh, I was born. Uh, in a small little, uh, what do I say, a small little Christian divine family. Uh, so, my my parents always tried to install, you know, this whole thing of uh, being human and also having a lot of faith. So, they all, always told me that, you know, uh, be like Jesus and, you know, follow the path of Jesus and all of that. So, I think uh, by the time I was in college, I also tried looking like Jesus. So, I grew some hair, put on goatee and all. So, you know, like, now you look like Jesus, let's crucify you, come. So, we <laughs> went on to that. So, uh, talking of faith was when. Uh, uh, so there was this time, I was a little boy, I think I was like 3 or 4 something like that. So my parents, uh, so they used to like right after prayer, so we had this evening conduct sessions, you know. So right after prayer, what they used to do is, uh, you know, uh, I was supposed to go and kneel down in front of Jesus and uh, I was supposed to pray of what I wanted. And uh, what I wanted at that point of time was just mango bites because I absolutely loved having chocolate. So uh, I closed my eyes and I would just say, please say, any mango bite in me, any mango bite in me. And suddenly, like like from nowhere, from the heavens would fall a mango bite. Now open, and Jesus gave me like a mango bite. I was so happy and made me happy. And this went on for a very, very long time. Well, actually, uh, like you all know, the truth is that my dad was like right there, and he would come and throw this mango bite, and he would run back like that. So that was the actual scene. So this kept on going for a, for, for quite some time because I was dumb. So after after I guess one point of time, uh, I wasn't too happy with the mango bite. So once when we closed, once when I was supposed to, when I was kneeling down, I was closed and I said, Any day me, any day you're airplane the name, any day you're airplane the name. And then suddenly my mango bed fell again. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with that. So I closed my eyes and I prayed again for it. And then one more mango bed. So then I wasn't completely happy with that fact. So I didn't take the mango bites and I kept praying every day to get my airplane, but that like completely didn't happen. So. Uh, towards the end, my parents had to reveal the secret about, you know, what's been happening and, you know, uh, he was the one that was throwing the mango bites. It's like, I think it's more of like Scooby-Doo, if you watch Scooby-Doo towards uh, uh, the end of every episode, like, you know, there's a monster and then they remove the mask and then it's some totally unknown from around. So it was Jesus, I removed the mask, it was my dad. So, <laughs> it was more like that. So, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I think two two things to kind of take away from the story is the fact that uh, uh, number one, don't buy anything uh, in wholesale, especially when you know when when you have no idea if this will actually keep selling for a long time. My dad bought a lot of mango bites, like so many mango bites. He was basically uh, I think he was uh, like a startup and he wasn't being funded, so it uh, let the family into poverty uh, of buying mango bites. I think he, he thought he'll use it forever. Like even when I get married, when everyone's throwing flowers saying Mangalyam Tandanana, he'll be throwing mango bites saying Mangalyam Tandanana. No, that didn't work. So, it kept on happening for a long time, so whatever. So, the number two, uh, whatever, number two, but the second point that I want to say is that uh, I never compromised. I wanted my aeroplane and I kept praying for that. And once I figured that I wouldn't get it, I uh, I completely lost it and I and I didn't go to pick up my mango bites because I wouldn't like, you know, ever, ever compromise. So, I dream big, not saying that, you know, I actually bought uh, a plane. The closest I got to a plane is Dosa. So, uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> so, leaving that, so, uh, so yeah, that went on for uh, quite a long time, I'm guessing. So, I think back in school, we're all, we're all asked this question of what we want to become when we become big, and you know, all of, all of them have their answer. So, I think this was when I was in, uh, I'm guessing, second or third or something like that. So, yeah, so this, uh, so it is asked what you want to become. So, it's starting from like, you know, front, okay, so I'm sitting in the last house, I'm the cool dude, I'm sitting in the back. So then about one half and almost all the people at know you kind of get to know that all these days you haven't been living in a classroom but it's actually like one mini police station because every other dude wants to become a cop, okay? What do you want to become? Police. What do you want to become? Police. Or some dude wants to become undertaker, he wants to have seven lives and all that. <laughs> so, so it was my turn uh, to, to, uh, to tell what I wanted to become and uh, 
I at that I hadn't thought about that till that point of time, and then when my turn came, I just stood up and I said, I want to become a Joker, and uh, everyone started laughing. Uh, well, I'm not Joker from Batman. Well, I meant that I wanted to become a clown because uh, I thought the clown was always, you know, the most. Uh, whenever I went to circus, I think at that point of time, entertainment for me was, you know, the biggest form of entertainment at that point of time was always going to a circus, and I and I thought that the clown was the funny somewhere. He owned the show. He made you, he made you laugh. He made you clap. He made you, he made you take off all the all those negative things that you had about life at that point. Negative points were, you know, going back to school the next day, but. Uh, yeah, I'm saying, I said Joker because, uh, you know, I didn't watch circus in Disney World, I watched it in Jumbo Circus. And in Jumbo Circus, like the clown was called a Joker. So, at that point, it was that, I, I think, I think towards the end of it, I, I think when I think about it now, I, I just, uh, I just think that all I wanted to be was an entertainer. And that was the word, the, the, the Joker really entertained me and uh, that was uh, something that I wanted to be. So uh, then, full it kept on going from there. Then uh, I came to school. So it's cool because I had all these things that I wanted to do. Like you know, school was like super not happening for me because uh, you know they didn't uh, uh, appreciate all of these things. They wanted you to study, and uh, I was like, we don't need no education. But uh, yeah, it uh, it didn't quite uh, work out well for me. I was I was like super super duper bad at school, and I wanted to do a lot of different things. But I was never given the opportunity to because. Uh, when when they said you know we have Christmas carols, who wants to sing? I would raise my hand and say you no, you study with me. I am not part of it. I am part of it. I am not. I am not. Okay. So so that happened. Uh, so I think uh, after all that, uh, I would just forward them. But I think in my head always, you know, I wanted to uh, just be something as I am. I am from the. I am from. I am like a kid of the 90s. How many from you? How many of you like you know from the 90s here? Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> I'm kidding, sorry. So, uh, I think one thing about being born in the 90s is that, you know, you are, for me personally, I've grown up listening to so much good music, uh, so many good mu movies, and you know, I think now that kind of art doesn't kind of exist somewhere, I do feel, because it was, it was so good, it was so real back then is what I felt. So, uh, I think I grew up. I grew up listening to a lot of, uh, let's say, some Westlife, some Backstreet Boys, and you know, some music like that. Much. So I think uh, at a point after listening to their songs on loop, I kind of felt that you know, this is what I wanted to become. I wanted to make music like this. So uh, I wanted to listen to how I, I, uh, you know, sound on probably a cassette. So, uh, so you can't. I, I. So back in the day when you wanted to record yourself on a cassette, you can't. Uh, if you do that you will end up spoiling, uh, you know, what is actually running in that cassette. Like if I would go and record like a Backstreet Boys, like on a Backstreet Boys uh, cassette, I would ruin their song and I would have my voice there. So I didn't want to do that. So I opted to pick my parents' devotional kind of their cassettes and I recorded my soul. It would start with, when their player will be like, Devas me kum varam nitchi na, just be it. So, yeah, it was like that, okay. So, uh, so at that point of time, I completely had this thing, dude. So I want to do music, and I want to do all of those. Uh, you know, I just want to make music, dude. I think after watching uh, larger than life artists like Michael Jackson and, and uh, Ricky Martin and Brian Adams, so many people, dude. I think they made people move with joy, with tears, and I just wanted to be like that. Just, uh, just live that uh, larger than life dream. Until in 19 some time, one dude came. Bro, do you have my pen drive? I've given two. Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? Is that a yes or no? Yes. Everyone does. Everyone in Malu crowd. And who doesn't know Punjabi woman? So I think back in the day, so uh, Miram was the first film that I happened to watch of Punjabi woman. And I was blown by that thing. Was my my jam at that point of time. I've danced that song. Uh, I've, I've really lost count on how many times I've actually like you know danced that song. So Punjabi woman had something about him that was so. Uh, young, it was something that you know I hadn't kind of seen before. So at that point of time, like I was, I think I was like the biggest fan of Punjab rap. I mean, uh, the girls who cut their reins are different, but I was also a very good fan. Like I would take a bullet for Punjab. I would have really taken a bullet for Punjab woman at that point of time with the bulletproof jacket, but I would take it. <laughs> so anyway. So uh, I so the movie that actually caught my attention at that point of time, as I said, is Miram, and I was like, dude, this is what I want to do. I want to be on screen. I want to dance. I want to act and do all of that until 2000 came, and then came my next idol. What name? Ting 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 ting. You know this dude, right? Come oh, on, man. Who doesn't? I mean, check out that. Like, like seriously, like this was 
like I think this is that time where you know they had most sales of that banyan happening. So I got one for myself, but uh, I think I kind of ended up looking like Ramanand uh, from Punjabi house. I want to see. Yeah. So, bhai, you guys are full happy that I'm looking like Ramanand from Punjabi. Okay. Anyway. So uh, that happened. So I think when I saw Hrithik Roshan, dude, I was like blown. I mean, look at that dude. Look at the bass and all that. I was like, dude, I wanted to be like this one. This film uh, in the movie Come On Up, and I'm guessing that's probably the first uh, uh, Hindi film that I watched. And uh, dude, this guy was doing all sort of stuff, you know. Like he was, he was singing, he was dancing, and he was, he was beating up the bad guys and all of that. And it seems so cool. And yeah, and for me, I, I think I personally always did believe that, you know, this this person that is on screen is actually the one that is doing all of this. There are no cameras behind. There's nothing. It's just life, and you know, this dude is capable of you know pulling all of this off. So. Uh, I just, you know, instantly just became a Hrithik Roshan fan and uh, that day I decided, I think at uh, this probably at the age of 7 or 8, what I want to be is a star. I wanted to be a super duper star. Well, my parents didn't approve of that idea, so my school also did. So as I said, school went very, 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 very bad. So I went to college, uh, college happened. I think, I think by the time college happened, yeah, so that's when I was telling my parents, you know, I want to do an album and all that. So my mom only knew that photo album and all of that, so they didn't have an idea about all of that. So uh, at one point of time, somehow I agreed. I, I, I somehow sort of convinced them that you know this is what I actually want to do. And uh, finally, I did. Uh, I think one, two, or three songs that went up very viral, like multiple views, all thirty views, fifty views, hundred views, and all that. Like nobody watched it. Okay, so it was really, really bad. But uh, I think uh, so. Once this was, I think I so I did BA. Uh, I did BA journalism and psychology, and how that happened also is a funny story because I didn't know what I wanted to do because there's no certain course that you would join to become a superstar, right? Yeah. So I was like, uh, I absolutely had no idea. So uh, I think I wanted to do BCom in the beginning because uh, my friend was doing BCom. So I uh, I went, uh, I think I went a little late for admissions or something like that. So by the time I got there, the admissions for uh, BCom was over, and they said only BA. So for me, it was like you know going to a hotel and saying, "Chata, where is fried rice?" He said, "No fried rice, only noodles." I said, "Ah, what day?" I said, "Okay, I'll have to BA." So I did BA like that. So towards the final, uh, towards the final layer of BA, okay. So I, it was it was at that time. So uh, I had I had like zero attendance. I think I had four or five percent attendance. I'm guessing it was really bad. So you have to. So there's one way where you can pay a lot of money and then just you know uh, get your attendance thing together and then you can go write your exams and done. So I thought you know uh, I mean that was my only option. So my parents gave me some money. It was I think it was around some 50, 20 grand or something like that. So I was going to pay this. Uh, I think my exam was probably uh, like you know in a few days. I think in a week from the day something happened to me. And what that something was that I was going. Uh, in the middle of the night, I was, I was just driving my car and I was just going and you know, I think uh, uh, Bangalore as of now, I think everybody relates to Bangalore with a lot of traffic and all of that, but Bangalore wasn't uh, absolutely a place where it was, it was known to be like a garden city and all of that. So I kind of felt, I, I, like at 2 in the night, you kind of feel that way because no one's around. So uh, I just, uh, I don't know, I just said this is Bengaluru in my head and I have this thing of uh, automatically trying to rhyme every uh, thing uh, to my previous sentence. So the next thing I said was, you can call me Guru. Uh, so guru means like how you say aya macha and all that. So in Bangalore they say guru. So I said this is Bengaluru. You can call me guru. There's something about this guru. So I got that and the tune came into my head. I was like damn dude, I have to do this. This is maybe my song. So the next day I sat down and I wrote that song. No, I wanted to do that song. So I was very adamant that I finished the song as soon as possible. But uh, with my uh, my previous wonderful hits of 50 and 100 views and with no money left with me to do all of this, this is not an option. So, uh, I think uh, I had to take uh, one of the biggest decisions of my life. So this is where, so this is my exam day. So I came my exam day and so morning I'm supposed to go pay my fine. If I pay my fine, I can just go and write my exam. So that was, that was the scene happening. So in my head, I'm still thinking maybe if I use this money, I can actually finish my song and I can actually release it. So, uh, I remember, so this is this is my college, and I was at the bakery. I was I ordered one tea and one puff, an egg puff, and I'm putting and I'm and I'm thinking, you know, I I made the biggest decision of my life. The biggest decision of my life is was actually if I should eat the puffs or not because at the same time I saw like one cockroach going near the glass where they display all the puffs and all again. So, but I still ate it because I was hungry, and I also decided that. Uh, 
I'm not going to write it. I want to do my music and this is what I want to do and I'll go ahead and do my song and I did it. I think uh, uh, at that point of time, I think uh, that that was my first ever video to hit 1 million views, man. So that was like, dude, finally. Yeah. Great and all that, but it was, it was, it was at least like, you know, it was better than getting 50 and 100 views, dude. And it was somewhere that, you know, where you're being recognized for something that you actually want to do. Uh, so that happened, and uh, after that, at the same time, uh, another thing that was happening here was that, you know, I, I kind of did a few short films and all that, uh, here and there, here and there. So, uh, uh, one of my friends happened to have this script that I really liked, and he said that, you know, he wanted me to do the central character of the film. And uh, I, I thought totally wanted to do it. So, but at the same time, like, you know, nobody would invest on a newcomer, on a new face. I mean, look at this face, who would invest? So, that was the scene. So, for me, uh, for me, uh, like, you know, I wanted, my, my first focus was being here in the Malayalam industry, this is where I wanted to do my movies and all of that. So, uh, what I thought, you know, maybe I should build my market here up in Kerala, where people absolutely do not know me, and that's when a song called I Am A Mallu happened. So, I Am A Mallu happened quite well for me. And uh, people, at least some people got to know who this dude is. So with that, finally again, my, uh, my uh, director went on pitching uh, the space to produce this thing. See, this is the guy from Aimo Malu. Can we have the film with him? And then again, they were here and they were okay with it. But at the same time, they were confused, you know, if, you know, this guy, because the character in the film had to be a student, you know, who's, who's doing his level. So uh, I, was, I looked a little more older uh, in Aimo Malu. See, that was me. Smoking is dangerous. I don't know what I'm smoking though. That was a beady dude. I only smoked like 20 beads for that shot. It wasn't good. Like, so I to go for the honey, get him on the guys. Yeah. Well, whatever. Uh, so that kept happening. So uh, by the end, so the whole thing was, you know, if I would be able to pull off a character which uh, in which I was supposed to look like a boy. So that was my next question. So which then I thought and made a song called Break Free, in which I happen to look like that. So. I didn't know anything much, I just shaved, but uh, the dudes weren't convinced in the first place, so which is why this song happened. And that song kind of ended up working for me again, and then called me the producer, who happened to produce the, f the film that probably I was so inspired by, I remember I told you how much, you know, Niram got into me and all of that. So the same producer of Niram happened to call me up and he told me that, you know, uh, I like what you're doing, so, you know, maybe we should do a film together. And that's when I pitched in, uh, you know, uh, about about my film, which is called Nonsense. And uh, it finally worked, and you know, everything everything went on, and we shot the film, and you know, finally it was it was like absolutely crazy, because you know, I mean, usually everybody goes for auditions and all that and gets it. I think that is that is like you know that, that is how I'm sure you know better, right, bro? I think, uh, but yeah, all of you, all of you. <laughs> But, you know, I think I always believed that through music I would make it to the films. I think, uh, uh, it, I think movies, I think the whole process of movies is being, you know, where you are on screen and you're being watched by people. But I think what I believed was, you know, uh, from, from, you know, your YouTube screens where people would watch you through people, I would be pushed to the big screen and then back into people again. And uh, I think it kind of worked for me, the film happened. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's not like that he, they lived happily ever after kind of story. The film, at the same time, because of a lot of differences with, you know, the creative people and the people in, uh, involved in the production and all of that, uh, even though, like, the film eventually picked up very well, then, because of all of this, I, I don't think even, you know, anybody knows about a film like this at the moment. I think there is no DVD, there's absolutely, like, the film is completely, like, you know, it's like R.I.P. So, uh, I personally like, you know, got to a lot of depression, I'm like, I want to echo my I want to echo my my film is gone. But uh, I think I've gotten out of that kind of space where, you know, it's so negative. I think that kind, I, I think everybody goes through that thing when you, where, you know, uh, where, where uh, I think you're thinking a lot and you're making crazy ideas, but nothing's working. But at the same time, people are just winking and making things happen. So, not against anybody, I think everybody has their luck. And everything, I think, uh, of, of, of what I know, I think, I think of what I've at least felt is that, you know, life, life is a game. I think it's that line that everybody tells that life is a game. But it is, it is, I think it's, it's more of a game of, you know, it's more of like chess and snake and ladder together. Where you use your brains and you think that, you know, this is my next move and I'm going to play it like that. And, you know, you keep moving it and you keep moving it and towards the end, all of a sudden it becomes snake and ladder. Because you are at 98, and at 99, there's that big snake that will get you all the way back to 2, right? When Discovery Channel hasn't discovered that snake yet. It's like that big. So, 
What's that called? So that snake bit me and it put me all the way down. So I'm here. So what do I do next? So I was depressed. I said, you know, a lot of thinking and all of that. But I think, you know, what you have to do, I think with anybody that's probably failed, I think everyone's failed too. I think to be, success, to be successful, you need to fail. So you just roll the dice and start playing again. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I think I'm uh, quite at that point in life. I think, uh, where, uh, I think my complete presence of, you know, talking to people, of being around people, completely changed once the film uh, didn't get the kind of appreciation that I deserve. I'm not claiming to be, you know, an amazing film and all that, but it was a decent film and it didn't work. So I was, I was, I was really upset. And uh, so a lot of people uh, kept messaging. A lot of people kept kept asking my friends, you know, what happened to him? Why don't we see anything? Is he been washed out from the industry and all of that? So people get to, you know, that's the kind of thing. But what I don't think they realize is that I do come from a state in India called Kerala that proved that, you know, maybe being washed out is the the whole scene of, you know, the new beginning, a new rise. So uh, I think I'm in that point of journey. Uh, I think in in uh, trying to discover, and uh, I feel so hard that you know I want to succeed harder. And uh, I think uh, in point of time I will. And uh, I don't uh, personally read a lot of books, but uh, I think when uh, my friends and I moved on with great books, I was still stuck to Tinkle Lights and Badrama. So. Uh, but one book that I have happened to read is The Alchemist and uh, among a lot of things that make uh, a lot of sense in that uh, book is a line that says uh, uh, wherever wherever your heart is where is where your treasure is so I think just follow your heart man because uh, it's always right it's it's right most of the time so just follow it just uh, use your uh, heart listen to it and use your head to uh, actually give you perspective to help you get to where your heart wants to go and uh, when you have to take the risk, please use your, uh, you know what this is? Dice. Is it dice? What is this? I got balls. If you know. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I don't know what will happen here, but uh, we're not just normal balls. See, the kind of crazy balls. And you need a lot of crazy balls if you want to make it, my friend. Let me tell you that. Thank you so much. It was great fun, my time. Now, this is one speaker who nobody will forget in traveling from Mango Bites to Mallow Rap. Could you please sing two lines for us? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> So it's very very simple, uh, if you don't know every time I do with the M-A-L-L-U, M-A-L-L-U, what you have to say is I am uh, Malu, let's give it a shot, M-A-L-L-U, 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 L-A-L-A, I'm from the southern part of India and yes I'm a Malayali, Kela is this place for who beats the name with Mahapali, I share a fishy bank with the dude who is the big body, now that's a mass game from, are you a fan? of living poly, you can find me everywhere in every freaking gummy high life of the two bro, my friends call me Aria, I see what you like, and I say for Rokan beef, Korea, I don't be this bad bro, but the Eniki beef, we got some girls with the KM, but we also got the Eniki gold, I'm always always winning and so on, that's it, sorry, bad cold, we be eating meat with rice and dal, we will be watching my hand last, we be tasting on the edge, after the smallest edge, I'm a M-A-L-L-U, M-A-L-L-U, M-A-L-L-U-M-A-L-L-U 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 Thank you! <laughs>